If you want to enjoy different results, you will have to take different actions. And the hardest part in all of this isn't what you imagine. The hardest part is to decide with all your heart that you are going to commit to making this change. Once you do that, the rest becomes easy. Today I'm presenting my highlights of Frederick Patenot's The Raw Secrets, The Raw Food Diet in the Real World, which is a book that you can download for free following the link in the description below. Radical ideas have much more power than common advice, but in their power lies the danger. Like an explosive charge, radical ideas must be handled carefully. The raw vegan diet is such an idea. I found a little book by Herbert Shelton called Food Combining Made Easy. It made a strong impression on me. Shelton stated that humans, like other frugivorous animals on the planet, are meant to live on fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds and nothing else. Albert Mosseri. I was shocked to discover that he was saying the same thing. Our natural diet should be composed of fruits and vegetables and maybe some nuts and seeds. Seeds and fats were taking over my diet. I was sometimes eating 5 to 6 avocados a day as well as a lot of nuts and seeds. To pacify my cravings I began to use oil, condiments, salt, garlic and other items. Since the last thing I wanted to do was eat cooked food, I created all sorts of replacements for the cooked foods I was craving. I went berserk with raw food recipes. Raw pies, raw chocolate, raw lasagna, you name it. All raw, all organic, all healthy, right? To get back to the raw food diet, I began with small steps. First I found that the most important thing was to eat mostly foods that are biologically specific to human beings. Fruits, vegetables and small quantities of nuts and seeds. And avoiding grains, beans and condiments. I had to pay attention to hunger, food combinations and the quantities of fat, nuts and seeds in my diet. I also found that when eating baked roots or steamed vegetables I felt much better than when I was eating lots of nuts and seeds or complicated raw recipes. Just as the book Fit for Life misled people years ago, making them believe that they were practicing natural hygiene just because they were combining bread or chicken properly, new raw foodists on the scene are being misled into thinking that they are eating a healthy raw food diet just because the foods they eat are unheated. One says that fruit is the best of all foods, another says that fruit feeds internal mold. One promotes supplements, while another says that no supplements should be ever consumed. One guy recommends water fasting, while the other says it is dangerous and we should take juices instead. And so on. All this confusion exists because most raw foodists, teachers and students alike, are unaware of the basic principles of health. The lack of basic principles in any science will lead to its disintegration. Some raw foodists even think that anything raw is better than anything cooked. They think that all they need to do is to eat raw foods and avoid cooked foods at all costs. An adherent of the raw, not raw philosophy would, for example, shun steamed vegetables, but will not hesitate to eat a jar of raw almond butter in a week or even in a day. He eschews all cooked food, never thinking that some of his raw eating habits could harm him more than some cooked diet plans. How to determine our natural diet? Whenever someone tells me nutrition is so complicated, I respond, it doesn't seem to be for the animals in the wild. I remind them that wild animals do not think of nutrition as anything complex. They simplify the matter by eating only raw, natural foods for which they are biologically designed. If man, like the other animals of nature, is constituted for a certain type of food, what is that food or what is that type? What, in other words, is the normal food of man? He sought his answers in several directions. Scientists agreed that man's original home was in a warm climate, either in the tropics or the subtropics. Without tools and without fire, he must have lived in a part of the world where the spontaneous productions of nature could be obtained by him with the only quote-unquote tools 
with which he is physiologically equipped and could eat without artificial preparation. If man first lived in a warm climate, he reasoned, and if, like other animals, he subsisted on foods spontaneously produced by nature, these foods must have been those which grew wild in such a climate, quite probably such foods as are still spontaneously produced in such localities. The woods of the south, as is well known, abound in sweet fruits and nuts. It will be seen at a glance that this line of reasoning led straight to the fruits of the trees as man's normal diet. Herbert Shelton Nuts are only available for part of the year in warm climates. And they are available fresh, not dried. Also, vegetables and vegetable matter abound all year round and have probably been consumed by humans for as long as they have been on this planet. That since the beginning of agriculture, humans have been cultivating and eating foodstuffs that they are not necessarily designed to eat, notably grains. This also means that we have stopped propagating the wild fruits. If you were to go wander in the most tropical jungles of the world, you would be surprised to find how little food there is to eat. There are some places though where a huge variety of the most amazing fruits still grow in the wild. These places are the jungles of Southeast Asia, where some of the great apes live. When animals like a fruit or any other natural food, they eat it and carry the swallowed seeds inside them to excrete elsewhere thus propagating the species of the fruit they prefer. Thus they create after hundreds of years the food environment best suited to them. Since our tastes are still very close to theirs, it's only in the regions where the primates live that we may find an abundance of edible wild fruits. As there are no pure frugivores, all frugivores eating freely of green leaves and other parts of plants, man may also without violating its constitutional nature, partake of green plants. These parts of plants possess certain advantages, as have, has been previously pointed out, in which fruits are deficient. Actual tests have shown that the addition of green vegetables to the fruit and nut diet improves the diet. Herbert Shelton Your own jaw can make lateral movements left and right, which is useful for chewing fruits and vegetables. Carnivores have such strong and powerful stomach acids that they can digest bones. They swallow meat without even chewing it and digest it. Our own stomach acids are very weak in comparison. Those hands are meant for grabbing and peeling fruits. Carnivores and herbivores can only use their mouths to eat. Even omnivores like pigs, that our modern biologists would like to classify humans with, swallow fruits whole, with a peel and everything. They don't have the hands required to peel an orange. But now look at the primates. It's so amazing to see them eat because they are so similar to us. They have hands with five fingers, just like us, and use them to grab and peel fruit. They'll peel bananas and oranges, just like us. Chimpanzees will even use a rock to crack open nuts. Chimpanzees eat mostly fruits, some green leaves, nuts, and sometimes meat. Animal products represent less than about 5% of their diet. Bonobos eat mostly fruits with a certain type of plant similar to sugarcane, as well as various greens, young shoots and buds. They apparently do not eat any nuts. They eat some insects, perhaps small fish and small animals, but they are not seen hunting like chimpanzees. Animal products represent less than 1% of their diet. The animal acted according to the universal law of natural dietetics, that is, they found the new food to be pleasant to the sight, pleasant to the smell, pleasant to the taste. When it was consumed in the raw state, without combinations, without seasonings. Through the process of civilization, we humans have lost much of our instinct. We cannot rely on it entirely, the mistake of instinctive eating. Everyone, more or less, has a debased instinct. Fat your body doesn't need fatty foods in order to store body fat. It can create its own fat from the other non-fatty foods that you consume. All unrefined plant foods, including fruits and vegetables, contain a certain percentage of fat, which is enough to meet your needs. Even green vegetables contain essential fatty acids. 
Even fruit contains a small quantity of fat. Adding small quantities of avocados and nuts and seeds will certainly provide all the essential fatty acids you could ever need. It has been shown that excessive fat consumption from animal or plant sources contributes to the following health problems. Diabetes, candida, chronic fatigue, lack of energy, hypoglycemia and more. Since people do not eat enough fruit and haven't learned to eat enough fruit, they end up compensating by eating more concentrated fatty foods such as avocados, durian, oils, nuts and seeds. When prospective raw foodists go off their raw regimen, they almost invariably find themselves eating cooked, complex carbohydrates. Until they learn to consume high amounts of sweet fruits to fulfill their carbohydrate needs, they will invariably fail in their health and raw food efforts. Dr. Doug Graham The ideal is to limit your fat consumption to less than 50% of your calories. In practice, it means eating enough fruit to meet your caloric needs, which means a lot by most people's standards. Avoid oils. This includes olive oil, flaxseed oil, coconut butter, etc. Eat no more than one half to one avocado a day. Eat no more than two ounces, 60 grams of nuts or seeds per day. Alternatively, you can have two to four tablespoons of raw nut butter. Eat avocados or nuts on separate days. Eat fat only once a day. Don't eat fatty food every day of the week. Avoid the sweet fruit and fat combination. If you just eat an apple, it will digest quite fast and leave the stomach rapidly, but eat an avocado at the same time and digestion will be prolonged. The sweet fruit will have time to ferment and produce acidity. The same happens when you mix nuts with dried fruits, an abominable combination that is likely to putrefy and ferment. You can avoid fats entirely for weeks during times of hot weather when the body calls for water-rich foods such as tomatoes, cucumbers, melons, peaches, etc. Protein Nature determined that humans do not need more than 6% of total calories from protein even during the most intense growth phases. The average protein content of fruit is 5%. The average protein content of vegetables is 20%. The average protein content of nuts and seeds is 15%. There are other cultures in which people live on root-based diets and obtain an average of less than 5% of their total calories from protein while remaining in great health. The World Health Organization proved that Considering the fact that the body recycles most of its protein for its own needs, 5% is more than enough. Nuts and seeds. All the rest, grains, dairy, meat, etc. have to be seasoned and cooked to be appreciated. On the other hand, fruits, vegetables, nuts and seeds can be eaten with delight without any seasoning or cooking. Nuts are a seasonal food. They are not fresh all year round, but only two to three months out of the year. Then I found that there was a major difference between a fresh raw nut and a dried one. Dried nuts have lost their natural water and fill you more because their fat and protein concentration is higher. When I was in Spain, I had the occasion to taste fresh almonds straight from the tree. It was an extremely satisfying treat, crunchy, creamy and still watery but with a certain fat content. It is beneficial to eat nuts in small quantities depending on the individual. The maximum should be around 1 to 2 ounces, 30 to 60 grams, about 15 to 30 small almonds. Athletes and strong constitutions can have a little more. You will be able to gauge this for yourself eventually. We don't need to eat nuts and seeds every day. Eating avocados and nuts on separate days is better. Dental health and raw foods. Most people who do things correctly do not get problems with their teeth on a raw food diet. In fact, their teeth get better. After eating, the pH in the mouth drops to a more acid state. It takes one to two hours for it to go back up to an alkaline state. If you are snacking often, like most raw foodists are, the pH in the mouth will remain acid. This is a perfect environment for bacteria to do their work and produce even more acids that will create 
tooth decay. Raw foodists eat dried fruit and dehydrated foods. Dried fruit and dehydrated foods encourage tooth decay and gum disease. Nuts and seeds can be eaten in moderation as long as they are soaked, blended or eaten with a large quantity of green vegetables, but eaten straight out of the bag they could cause tooth problems. Raw foodists eat too many acid foods. Eating acidic foods in excess can have a negative impact on the teeth. These include lemon juice, fruit juice, citrus fruit, unripe fruit, vinegar and other acid foods. I recommend that you limit your consumption of citrus to about 2 to 3 oranges per day and instead have more non-acidic fruits, bananas, papayas, pears, mangoes, etc. If your teeth are in constant contact with sugar, even the natural sugars in the form of coconut water, honey, dried fruit, fruit juice or other sugary foods, tooth decay will occur. Eat celery after every fruit meal. I recommend brushing your teeth after a sweet fruit meal, bananas, persimmon, cherimoya, jackfruit, etc. After a juicy fruit meal, melon, oranges, etc. Rinsing your mouth with water seems to do the job. After eating certain high sugar fruits that tend to leave residues on the teeth, you should floss and brush your teeth, just water and a brush is fine. Those sweet fruits are banana, date, really ripe fig, persimmon, mango, cherimoya, durian, jackfruit, sapodilla, sugar apple, sweet sapoti, mammy, etc. You can also eat greens after a meal of such fruits, but brushing your teeth is a good idea. Avoid dried fruits and dried foods. Dried fruit and dehydrated foods are not raw foods and are not health foods. Remove food particles. It is not necessary to floss, but food particles that get caught between the teeth and along the gum line must be removed. You can use dental floss or learn to use a toothpick. It is important to do this once or twice a day. Research shows that it's more important how well you brush rather than how often you brush. Grains and bread. Vegetarians can easily understand that humans are not carnivores. But what I say is that humans are not granivores either. We are not biologically designed to eat grains. Species that are granivores, like some types of birds, have a special organ called the gizzard. What is a gizzard? It's a sort of second stomach that permits certain types of birds to grind hard seeds in order to digest them. With this type of strong stomach, they can even pulverize little rocks in no time. In fact, they swallow rocks to help grind grain. Even metal needles swallowed by some young birds are broken into pieces and eliminated with no apparent damage. Birds and fowl have no teeth. That's why they have to swallow whole seeds. But since they need to digest them, nature provides them with a perfect grinding machine attached to their stomach. Small rocks, when eaten, serve as millstones. The digestive tract of humans and of all frugivorous animals is too long for the efficient digestion of heavy starches. These foods stay there for too long and thus have a tendency to ferment. Diseases and conditions caused or aggravated by bread and grain consumption by Albert Mosseri. Common cold, flu, sinusitis, bronchitis, pneumonia, colitis, asthma, allergies, diabetes, arthritis, arteriosclerosis, heart attacks. Detoxification. Renovating crises are seldom severe and are always followed by better health. Persistence and determination are required when they come. Most people, particularly young and vigorous ones, will make the change with very little or no discomfort. When you improve your diet, you may initially experience a fatigue that in fact is just relaxation. Your body is letting go of its toxins in storage. This can take a few months, in most cases 4 to 8. Quote unquote detox that never ends is actually no detox at all, but is caused by eating the wrong high fat raw food diet and might also be caused by not eating enough fruits and vegetables to meet your energy needs. 
usually this detox is just another word for this diet doesn't work. Possible causes for lack of energy, lack of sleep, eating too many fatty foods such as avocados, nuts and seeds, using oil, a sedentary lifestyle, negative emotions, overtraining, lack of fresh air, lack of sunshine, dehydration, chronic stress, loneliness and anxiety, bad food combinations, eating without hunger, overeating, use of spices, salt and condiments, secondhand smoke. When you improve your diet, you become more sensitive, so your body will let you know more quickly when there's something wrong. The law of vital accommodation. When a poison is introduced into the organism on a regular basis to a degree beyond the body's capacity to expel it, the body adapts to this invader by insulating itself from it. This is done at the expense of normal body functioning. If you take a less than fatal dose of poison every day, after six months you could take a more than fatal one and survive. The body will resist the poison by avoiding absorption at all cost. But this also means that general nutrient absorption will be diminished. You will be much more affected and penalized by small doses of poisons than most people. Your body may violently reject the junk foods each time and these small dietary divergences may destabilize and ruin everything in the long term. Small but regular deviations can vitiate our efforts, prevent the desired results and make one feel worse than before. This is why I recommend avoiding the yo-yo effect of going back and forth between one diet and another. Once you're ready to give up something, give it up completely. Stick to your diet as determinately, though not fanatically, as possible. Yet you have to distinguish the big mistakes from the small ones. Eating some rice once in a while is without consequences as compared to drinking coffee every day. How to give up bad habits There is a popular tendency in the health movement that strives to do everything possible in order to appeal to the largest number of people. It assumes that most people are not ready for big changes. It assumes that they need to take baby steps, gradually and smoothly changing their habits. The experts in this frame of mind not only assume that people are incapable of great change, but also propose that people should only be encouraged to implement good habits, like eating more fruits and vegetables, rather than abandon bad ones, like eating meat. Rather than talk about the harmful effects of grains, coffee, salt, chocolate, meat and dairy products. This would discourage the reader who presumably does not want to change his diet but only get a cure for his problems. You shouldn't measure your health solely by how many good habits you have but also by how many bad ones you have. A typical advice goes like this. You have to change your lifestyle one piece at a time. You will slowly and gradually add more fruits and vegetables and get more exercise and daily sunshine. Meanwhile, you will gradually reduce your consumption of junk food, meat, dairy and pasta. The first approach rarely has success because it disregards basic psychology. We gladly accept something to do as long as it doesn't involve getting rid of the bad habits we love. We almost never let these go unless we are told we absolutely have to. It's easier to add than to remove where habits are concerned. Here are some bad habits that undermine health roughly in order of importance. Use of drugs, prescribed or illicit. Overeating. Lack of exercise. Indulgence in chronic stress and negative emotions. Coffee, cigarettes, alcohol, tea, chocolate and other popular poisons. Junk foods, fried foods, fast food, factory food, etc. Lack of sleep. Eating foods that are not specific to the human race. Breads, grains, meat, fish, dairy products, etc. Using condiments, spices, salt, etc. which hinder digestion and lead to overeating. Poor food combining. And lack of sunshine. 
You will never burn off the effects of your poor diet, no matter how many miles you run, how many supplements you take, or how much sunshine you get. The idea is not to try to be perfect, but rather to take an honest look at your habits and reform your lifestyle gradually. Supplements and Superfoods While the average supplement consumers buy cheap vitamin and mineral supplements in hopes of correcting their poor diet, vegetarians and raw foodists buy expensive, exotic, quality supplements either out of fear that their diet might be inadequate or believe that these fancy products are the missing pieces in the puzzle on which super health depends. Why would raw foodists who are supposed to have found the most natural diet there is need supplements? The supplements industry offers simple yet convincing reasons such as the soil is of a poor quality, the fruits and vegetables we buy do not contain enough vitamins and minerals, or the fruit is picked too early and has not reached mat maturity. And if we do not supplement, we will run into trouble. The nutrition researcher Dr. Joel Furman having gone through a lot of the research available, says in his book Eat to Live, Contrary to many of the horror stories you hear, our soil is not depleted of nutrients. California, Washington, Oregon, Texas, Florida and other states are, still have rich, fertile land that produces most of our fruits, vegetables, beans, nuts and seeds. It is my belief as well that soil depletion is not the biggest problem we face. Our main problem is a lack of assimilation due to improper food choices. Nearly everyone drinks milk as a calcium supplement, yet many end up suffering from osteoporosis anyway. No matter how much calcium they take, they will not get better until they discard the various causes that prevent calcium absorption or leach calcium from the body. If you don't feel or hear your organs, have no digestive pains and almost no gas, if your elimination is good without bad odors or need for toilet paper, then your digestion, the purpose of dietary enzymes anyway, is fine. Normally, vitamin B12 is made in the intestinal flora with the help of beneficial bacteria. So the most important thing is to make sure you do not destroy your intestinal flora. Lack of B12 in the diet is not the main cause of this deficiency, since animal products contain this vitamin. A lack of absorption, coupled with damaged intestinal flora, is the culprit. Dandelion greens contain a toxic substance that we can easily detect by its bitter taste. That means yet you could eat a few leaves, but not, not many more. Your body will let you know when you've eaten too many. But if you juice it and force yourself to drink it down, you may feel a buzz, which is nothing more than a toxic overload, in essence a drugging effect. Hunger When an individual has learned to live instinctively in every particular and eats only when genuinely hungry instead of for pleasure or out of fear of offending a host or hostess, then he or she is on the road to a state of superior health, unmatched in modern times. Virginia Vetrano, MD. False hunger disappears quickly, reappears again and disappears again. On the other hand, true hunger persists and becomes stronger. So to distinguish them, we only have to wait for one hour or maybe a little more. Appetite, writes Shelton, is a counterfeit hunger, a creature of habit and cultivation and may be due to any one of a number of things such as the habitual mealtime, the sight, taste or smell of food, condiments and seasoning, or even the thought of food. True hunger is not accompanied by any symptoms. There are no headaches or any discomforts. Ideas are clear, the mind lucid. We are optimistic, happy, tranquil and serene. True hunger can manifest itself spontaneously at any time of the day but not during the night. Hunger manifests itself in the dilation of the throat and the esophagus. The morbid symptoms of false hunger, writes Herbert Shelton, are identical to those felt by drug users when they are deprived of their habitual drug. According to Dr. Clownge, 
True hunger can be distinguished from appetite in the following manner. When you are hungry and you feel well, it is true hunger. But when you are apparently hungry and you feel unwell, it is false hunger. Some people faint and should eat quickly at these moments. After that, with the improvement of the digestive power, the reserves will be more substantial. Hunger will be felt less often and will be easier to bear. With a diet of denatured and cooked foods, one digests only 20% and the rest exits in the stool the next day. However, with a new healthy diet composed of living foods, one digests 90% and the stools are in small quantities, well formed and odorless. So the change from one state to another creates an urgent call for food until the digestive power improves. This hunger is a symptom of undernourishment. Dr. Clouch makes another useful distinction. When a sick person skips a habitual meal, he gets weak before feeling hunger. But when a healthy person skips a habitual meal, he feels hunger before getting weak. When we eat without experiencing a natural demand, we don't benefit, or we benefit very little, from what we eat. It is exactly like those who practice deep and forced breathing without any need, or those who drink without being thirsty. This way of eating, writes Shelton, transforms the body into a fertilizer factory. Think about thirst. Is it a pain? Is it a feeling of dizziness? Of passing out? It is none of this. Thirst is felt in the mouth and in the throat, and we feel a conscious desire to drink water. We never mistake a headache for thirst because we know thirst very well. It is the same for genuine hunger. We feel a genuine desire to eat. We are at ease without pain or discomforts. The salvia runs abundantly in the mouth and often we desire a particular food. Those that feel this fainting sensation for having missed a single meal should be fed in this manner. I have encountered many similar cases of people who have consciously ignored this sensation of hunger. They kept on not eating and ended up with an uncontrollable overeating that resulted in death by undernourishment. In this state, large meals are not properly digested. They pass in the stools and exacerbate this state of undernourishment. True hunger cannot be aroused by the smell, taste or even the thought of a food. When we are truly hungry, we are not so picky in our food choices. True hunger is not stimulated by condiments, spices and salt. When we feel true hunger, we are satisfied by simple food of any type in the natural state, without any seasoning or preparation. It is known that appetite, desire and false hunger can be stimulated by variety. When we no longer want to eat a food we are full of, we can excite the appetite by changing to another food. This is why variety leads to gluttony. If you eat small meals like vegetarian animals, you will need to eat three, four or even five meals a day. But if you eat large meals like carnivores, then one or two meals will suffice. As an experiment to understand hunger, wait an hour before eating the next time you think you are hungry. If it is true hunger, your pleasure when eating will be even greater and you will not be able to ingest large quantities of food because the stomach will not be distended from previous meals. When you are truly hungry, a simple apple or a head of lettuce will be a delight. It is through true hunger that eating simple unseasoned food becomes natural and easy. Signs of true hunger. The stomach pulls. The mouth salivates. The mind is optimistic, clear and happy. There is a pleasant sensation in the throat. It persists when ignored. Signs of false hunger are dry mouth, coated tongue and bad breath, headaches, rumblings in the stomach. The mind is spacey, unclear, the spirit pessimistic. Stomach cramps and pains, nausea, disappears when ignored. Sleep. You will notice that on a raw food diet, you will need less sleep on average, about one to two hours less. 
However, if you follow my recommendations, you will also want to increase your level of fitness by exercising more. For this, you will need more sleep to recover. Usually, for every hour of physical activity, you need about an extra hour of sleep. An observation of nature will show us that animals love to rest and sleep. They get as much sleep as they wish. Other items that disturb sleep are garlic, spices, onions, condiments and the habit of eating late at night. Your evening meal should be fairly simple, light and properly combined. Also avoid eating sweet fruit late in the evening. If you are truly hungry before midnight, a few bites of raw vegetables or an apple should be enough, but avoid heavy fruits and fats. Water. On a diet of raw fruits and vegetables with small quantities of fat and without salt or spices, one needs very little water to drink. This is because juicy fruits and vegetables contain all or most of the water the body needs. Your water needs increase when you exercise, in times of warm weather and under many other circumstances. When a healthy person is well hydrated, the urination frequency is between 8 to 10 times per day. You may also feel unnatural thirst if you overeat sweet fruit. Eating too much sugar, more than your body needs, will cause the body to reject the excess in urine with water, leading to a dry mouth. Unnatural thirst is an unpleasant sensation. It is one of dryness in the mouth and may be accompanied by slight dizziness. Natural thirst, in contrast, is a pleasant sensation like natural hunger. It manifests itself as a strong, slightly exciting desire for water. Raw food recipes. The use of salt, spices, soy sauce, miso, onion, garlic and oil excites the palate and leads to overeating. These are not foods that will give you health and energy. A real vegetarian doesn't want anything that resembles meat. She's over her meat addiction and is not seeking to replace it with foods that resemble it. Likewise, a raw foodist doesn't strive to create foods that resemble the popular meals she ate in the past. The 555 rule. It means that you should eat meals that take less than 5 minutes to prepare with a maximum of 5 ingredients and that cost less than $5. Salt, Spices and Condiments It is best to avoid salt and spices without making a religion out of it. Salt kills life, which is why we preserve foods in salt. It prevents living activity from occurring. It is an antibiotic, which means anti-life. If you put salt on a fresh cut in your skin, you will be able to feel its effects on yourself. It will burn you. Salt can accumulate in the body. It causes the body to retain water in order to dilute the salt in the tissues and to prevent harming the cells. Excess salt is deposited at various places in the body, such as on the walls of the arteries. Blood flow is thereby disrupted and high blood pressure is the result. When you stop eating salt, it will take many months for your body to reject it. Some days you may taste salt in your mouth, although you may not have eaten it in weeks. It is another proof that the body is rejecting the salt and not using it. You may urinate more at night for a while, even many months, until the body has rejected all the salt. Complete desalinization of the body may take years. The occasional use of fresh parsley, basil, dill or cilantro is okay, but I would avoid oregano, sage, rosemary, thyme and all herbs with a very strong taste. Raw garlic, onions, leeks. These fresh spices are used raw and cooked all over the world. They contain mustard oil, which, unless oxidized by cooking or long exposure to air, is an irritant that greatly upsets the digestive tract. Some raw foodists eat a lot of these foods and therefore carry a constant unpleasant onion odor and breath. Food combining. Bad food combinations create indigestion, fermentation and gas. All these signs, commonly considered normal, are indications of digestive malfunction. The food is fermenting and putrefying in the intestines. 
1. Do not combine fat with sugar. This is probably the most important rule to follow. The combination of fat or protein with sugar encourages fermentation. But some authors allow combining an acid fruit such as an orange with a fat such as nuts or avocado. The idea is that the acidity in those fruits is appropriate to help digest fats and the sugar content of these fruits is not as high. Examples of this bad combination include dates with nuts, dried fruits with avocado, avocado with sweet fruits, a fruit salad with coconut, etc. 2. Do not combine acid with starch. Acid with starch is a pretty bad combination. The acidity literally stops the digestion of starches in the mouth or makes it much more difficult and sometimes painful. Examples of this combination include mixing tomatoes with cooked potatoes, the classic tomato sandwich, and mixing bananas with oranges. Oranges are very acidic and bananas contain starch even when they are ripe. Bananas combine better with fruits that contain less acidity, sweet apples, mangoes, etc. 3. Do not combine different types of fatty foods within one meal. Fatty foods are quite difficult to digest. When many different kinds of fats are present within a meal, digestion is considerably slower. Combining leafy greens, spinach, lettuce, celery, etc. with any type of fruit is a good combination. Dried fruit is not a food that I recommend, so there's no point in discussing its food combining. It doesn't combine well with most acid and sub-acid fruits. 1. Do not combine cooked starch with sugar. 2. Do not combine different types of cooked starch together. 3. Do not combine proteins with starch. Sequential eating. Sequential eating is about eating foods in a certain sequence in order to improve digestion. What has been discovered is that when foods are eaten one at a time, the entire meal will digest in different layers. So if five different types of food are eaten one at a time, there could be up to five different types of digestion going on, with enzymes adapting to each particular type of food. When the five types of food are eaten all together, by either mixing everything in the plate or in the mouth, then the stomach is filled with the same mixture and will take a lot longer to digest with more difficulties too. The first concept to understand is that you should always start eating watery foods first and finish with concentrated foods. The watery foods, such as fresh fruit, are digested rapidly and leave room for the more concentrated foods. When you eat a piece of melon on an empty stomach, it digests very rapidly. Within minutes it already exits the stomach. With this understanding, it is then possible to eat something incompatible after this, such as avocado or nuts. Eat your fruit first, and then have vegetables or more concentrated foods after, not the other way around. Key Principles Eat foods ideally one at a time or one type of food at a time. Eat the least dense food first and the densest last. One exception would be to start with nuts or avocado or another protein food and then follow with vegetables, but nothing else. This sequence also digests well as the vegetables do not have a tendency to ferment. Digestion. When foods putrefy and ferment, they end up poisoning you. Poisons are reabsorbed in the intestines and may be the cause for headaches and many discomforts. Bad smelling stools, gas, noise in the stomach, pains, which are considered normal, are signs of indigestion. A dried mouth, when living mostly on fruits and vegetables, is also a sign of indigestion. When you wake up in the morning, you should not have any burps, gas, noise in the stomach or any sign that digestion is still going on in your stomach. If you do, it means digestion went on all night, depriving you of sleep and is still going on in the morning. In order to correct the situation, fast until you feel true hunger and proceed to eat small amounts of properly combined food. Eating without hunger. When the body needs no food and thus gives no signals for it, digestion is ineffective. 
There are many causes of poor digestion. Eating without hunger, poor food combining, poor eating conditions, overeating, eating foods not meant to be eaten by humans, the use of salt, spices and condiments. Juicing and blending. I only recommend vegetable juices, not fruit juices. The sugar in fruit juices is absorbed too quickly when separated from the fiber that comes with it when the fruit is eaten whole. When I make vegetable juices, I often add the pulp back to the juice. What I usually do is drink about 70% of the juice and then add the rest of the juice back with the pulp. I often eat this mixture with some chopped up tomatoes and avocado. I find this quite delicious and satisfying. The 100% raw food diet. Fanaticism takes most of the credit for dietary self-sabotage. I don't consider the following foods to be truly raw, that is, completely unadulterated, even though some of them are technically unheated. Most store-bought nuts and seeds, dried fruits, oils or coconut butter, most nut butters, dried spices, herbs and frozen fruit. Instead of constantly worrying about raw, think in terms of health. Ask yourself, is this really healthy for me? I do not claim to eat 100% raw all the time and I do not pretend that I'll even become 100% raw one day. I tend to go long periods of time during the summer on raw foods only, but there are also times where I'll eat some cooked foods such as steamed vegetables. I have found that I enjoy more energy eating raw foods, so I stick to raw foods as much. I also consider the junk food category, pizza, chips, fried foods, coffee, ice cream and pastries to be worse than meat. So a piece of chicken with a salad is not as bad as a slice of pizza with a salad. I knew people who after years of eating a 100% raw food diet were dreaming of eating huge chocolate cakes. But if someone has dreams like that, it means he's not satisfied with what he eats. Eating 100% raw or close to it is actually easier than eating 70% raw. When you are ready and start to eat all raw, your desire to eat cooked foods goes away after a few weeks. The psychology of dietary change. Small dietary deviations once in a while are not as harmful as they would be if they were habitual. The other side of the coin is that these small but repeated cheats can sabotage all the benefits you are expecting to receive from your diet. When you eat a diet composed mostly of fruits and vegetables without spices or salt, and when you eat those foods with genuine hunger, you eventually purify your body and become more sensitive to any poor food choice. The body reacts to any unhealthy food much like a child's body. The first effort of the living organism in relation to adverse and inimical influences is to overcome and destroy them. Failing in this, it attempts to accommodate itself to such conditions and influences. For what it cannot overcome, it must learn to endure or perish. Herbert Shelton Backsliding is probably necessary to understand where you want to go. But what really hurts in the long term are the small cheats that end up occurring on a rather regular basis. Life should be fun and eating healthy shouldn't be a big struggle. At some point you have to accept the path that you have chosen and be happy with it. What's the point of eating healthy if you feel deprived and you're constantly going back and forth and trying to find your balance again each time? Trying to eat raw using force or willpower alone will ultimately fail. On one side you are trying to make yourself eat in a way that you think is good for you, but on the other side you are fighting it because on that level you do not want to do it. This inner struggle, in spite of the greatest willpower in the world, is going to make you fail. A discrepancy between what we eat and who we are in the world generates a kind of tension, which is resolved either when the diet moves back in line with the person's incarnate role, when the person's entire life changes to come in harmony with a new diet. Force, that is willpower, can hold diet and being apart, but not forever. The tension will build in the form of intense cravings, aversions and eventually physical illness. 
Charles Eisenstein, The Yoga of Eating. A fruit-based diet is a high-energy diet. It is, isn't compatible with a sedentary lifestyle. It isn't compatible with certain low-energy activities, friendships, and even jobs. Binges and cravings. I try to eat dates only when they are really juicy and in season. That is only in September, October. There are many more causes to this overeating, not just the abuse of nuts and seeds. Eating without hunger is a common cause. When you eat without hunger, little is digested and you are hungry because the body is not well fed. It's a vicious cycle that must be broken. A calming monologue may be going on to justify their excesses. You can fast tomorrow. You already went too far, you might as well enjoy it. If I'm going to crash, I might as well burn. It's not so bad, people eat like that every day, and so on. Cravings are a conscious physical or psychological desire for a particular food or substance. They are often a withdrawal symptom and do not reflect physiological need. When giving up salt, bread, spices, pasta, meat, etc., the body may crave these substances for a period during which temptation must be resisted with great will and at all costs. After a few months on a healthy diet, it is not normal to constantly feel these cravings. In these cases, I attribute cravings to poor nutrition and a deranged assimilation, which is usually caused in raw foods by any type of the following, an excess of fat, dried or sweet fruit, salt intake, eating without hunger, the use of spices, etc. It is imperative to learn to consume enough fruit at a meal, so you are not hungry again for another four to five hours. Otherwise, any mental effort to avoid frustration and hunger will lead to another binge. When to eat, quoted from Albert Mosseri's book, The Quest for Perfect Health. In all my previous writings, and for more than 30 years, I have followed the pioneer hygienists, especially Shelton, who recommended two meals a day. However, I now realize that this has been a mistake. So many people are afraid of hunger, as if it were a sign of imperative and urgent need. It's better to wait for hunger than to skip a meal. Hunger is uh, rarely felt at night with some exceptions, such as during a long fast or in cases of undernourishment. It follows that we should never eat late at night. However, a fast can be broken at any time, including during the night, with a piece of fruit. For human beings, night is meant for catabolism and elimination, whereas the day is for anabolism and digestion. These functions should not be inverted by transforming day into night and night into day. Hunger can announce itself early in the morning or many hours after waking up. We must wait for it before eating. Foods of our biological design. A high fat diet is a disaster. Excess fat, raw or cooked, reduces oxygen in the blood and leads to several health problems. It causes blood sugar imbalances by decreasing the effectiveness of insulin in carrying sugar to the cells, leading to high blood sugar. Eating too much fat leaves us tired all the time because fat is difficult to digest. The problems related to the high fat diet are numerous and well documented. A high protein diet is even more dangerous because excess proteins commonly putrefy during digestion. It poisons the body and lays the foundation for cancer. For these reasons, almost no modern health specialist recommends fat-based or protein-based diets. Sometimes protein-based diets, for example the Atkins diet, are recommended for weight loss, but almost no one considers this type of diet healthy. A grain-based diet will acidify the system, as these foods contain very few alkaline minerals. A high starch diet can work if it consists of cooked root vegetables such as potatoes, yams and manioc, which are alkaline forming. Fruit should dominate the diet. Fruits are rich in vitamins, but sometimes low in certain minerals such as calcium and sodium, which are abundant in vegetables. This is one reason that vegetables, especially the green leafy ones, are essential. 
to get all of the minerals that you need, you should eat approximately one or two pounds of green leafy vegetables every day. There are a few challenges with eating a sufficient quantity of green vegetables. First of all, we often do not chew them long enough. And second of all, we don't have time to eat large salads. The best way to solve this problem is to learn to make green smoothies and blended salads. A green smoothie is simply a fruit smoothie with some green vegetables, spinach, celery, etc. thrown in there. The result is a surprisingly tasty and nutritious smoothie that is probably the best raw food meal ever. Nuts and seeds can also be blended with other foods such as tomatoes to make a dressing. Wild plants contain more minerals and vitamins than cultivated vegetables. Because of this potency, it is not possible to eat a lot of them. Small, regular quantities of edible wild plants are very beneficial. Eating them in excess is not. Dried fruits are addictive and most people have a tendency to overeat them. This has bad consequences. Gas, indigestion, frequent urination, digestive discomforts, cravings and disturbed sleep. Dried fruits also stick to the teeth and encourage tooth decay. If you are craving dried fruit, it is simply due to the fact that you are not eating enough fresh fruit to meet your caloric needs. When you start eating more fresh fruit, all of your cravings for dried fruit will go away. In fact, if you are craving anything sweet other than fresh fruit, you are simply not eating enough fruit. The main problem with frozen raw foods is that they are eaten cold, which is the equivalent of putting an ice pack inside the stomach. It is almost certain to cause indigestion and the regular consumption of cold frozen fruits can negatively affect the state of the bacterial flora and cause a vitamin B12 deficiency. It used to be part of my diet and it never made me sick or caused any problems like other dairy foods did. I phased yogurt out of my regular diet at some point, but occasionally I will have some yogurt. On the topic of egg yolks, I don't see them as something that could be consumed regularly, but I'm not opposed to them either. It's a matter of personal choice. Note that two egg yolks at one time is the maximum that should be eaten. Egg white is dangerous, it forms acid, is too rich in protein, is indigestible and should never be eaten raw. If you put a piece of fish near a piece of meat, you'll see that it decomposes much faster than the meat. The same happens inside your body. All marketed fish have already started to rot. Fresh fish doesn't smell bad. It is an especially poor choice today because of the heavy metal contamination of fish, a result of water pollution. For these reasons, I don't recommend fish. Compromises can take a lot of time to hone this diet. If you eat something wrong, don't be hard on yourself. Just observe. You are learning. Use the opportunity to watch how you feel after eating it. If you live in constant apprehension of the effects of your still imperfect diet, your fear is upsetting your digestion and further undermining your confidence. Can you compare yourself to others? In order to experience paradise health, you would need the right constitution to start with. It would probably take generations of healthful living. But who's attracted to natural hygiene and the raw food diet generally? Those who experience health problems to begin with. Do these people get better? Yes. Will they ever experience paradise health? Possibly not. Other factors come into play. Genetics, environment, past illness history, stress, or emotions, etc. Diet isn't the only factor. Attributing every health problem to diet alone is a common mistake. Personally, I do not know anybody past the age of 50, except my natural hygienist, raw food, vegetarian friends, who does not take any type of drug or medicine. If you are over the age of 60 and don't take any drug or medicine, you are a rare pearl. Beware. People are all chronically sick even if they show a cheerful disposition. They don't talk about their daily misery and pains. They neither listen to them nor ignore them. Fatigue is fought with coffee, insomnia with sleeping pills, constipation with laxatives, pessimism with wine, depression with drugs, and headaches with aspirin. We think that they are doing well just by looking at them, but it's not true. 
Albert Masseri. If you cannot compare yourself to your friends or even your relatives, you can compare yourself to yourself. Check out how you do from one period of time to another, looking at the important factors that may have influenced your health. Eating raw in cold climates. Fruit that is still cold from the refrigerator when eaten will make you cold. It may even give you the chills. My advice is to avoid cold food at all costs during the winter. Pull from the fridge the fruits and vegetables that you will eat the next day. They need to be at room temperature when eaten. If you want to eat something straight out of the fridge, warm it up in water. For example, immerse a few apples in warm water for 10 minutes. Food supply. It took me a while to realize this. You can't really make it on this diet unless you have a huge quantity of food at your disposal at all times. Fasting when necessary. Just as you must know when to eat, you must also know when not to eat. When you fast and miss a few meals, the mind clears and all moroseness disappears. You find your balance again. The 24-hour fasts help you correct these mistakes, giving your digestive organs a short, well-needed rest. You can benefit from it from time to time. I do not recommend this fast on a weekly basis though. Fasting a day per week is the equivalent of fasting 52 days per year. This is a lot, probably more than you should. What I'm talking about here is fasting one day once in a while, whenever you feel the need for it. You may have headaches, pains or digestive disturbances. It may be the death of a relative or even being in love that makes you lose your appetite. In these conditions, you should fast for two to three days, drinking only water. This is much better than eating without hunger. Where to go from here? If you want to enjoy different results, you will have to take different actions. And the hardest part in all of this isn't what you imagine. The hardest part is to decide with all your heart that you are going to commit to making this change. Once you do that, the rest becomes easy.